What's up guys, it's Azran here and we are back with MPL coverage and we are doing week 4 right now. Um, it's been a while since I've posted some MPL coverage on my channel, it's just I've been busy. But I think we're back now, we should be back to our scheduled amount of content, especially with MPL. So we have week 5 here, the Bloom Doom Glooms on the close row side versus the Pedal Board Porygons. And I've got Anti versus No Matter What here. And Anti's bringing ground, no matter has water, so it's in his favor right now. But that can all change in terms of misplays and whatnot. No matter leads off with Pelipper, Anti leads off with Lando. Pelipper is Scarf and goes straight for the Hydro Pump, and boom, goodbye Lando. <laughs> Anti switches out into Seismitoad, as Seismitoad goes for a Grass Knot straight onto it to, to kill the Seismitoad. Kingdra comes out. And a Draco comes out from the Seismitoad, or from the Kingdra. Kingdra switches out. This Seismitoad is a switch in. Anti switches out into Hope Hippo to get rid of the, of the, what you call it? The fucking, the weather. As no matter switches into Kingdra as Hippo gets the rocks up. Now the Pelipper is on a timer and has limited switch ins due to the scarf and stuff like that. Anti switches out into his driller here. As Pelipper goes for the Hurricane, Exeter goes for the Rock Slide and misses. That's really fucking terrible. And, okay, if we look at that play, definitely... Okay, my question is, how does Anti win? I think they both misplayed. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. Because Anti needs Exeter to even have a chance of winning. And no matter should realize that. Well, no. So I think that's why no matter what for the, yeah. So anti misplayed because no matter should realize that the Excadrill is more essential to anti than than it is. So he should predict the size until coming in. So I guess no matter made a better play in that situation. Anyways, Pelper goes for a hurricane. He gets a nice crit as the Garchomp goes for his Z move. Devastating Drake's able to knock out the Pelipper. And now, but no matter doesn't need the weather anymore because the ex drill is dead. Garchomp goes for the EQ and Play Rock comes out from Yazu. He takes Rough Skin. No Rocky Helmet though, obviously because it's a Z move. Anti goes to the Seismitoad as Seismitoad goes for the Earth Power, able to knock out the Azu there. Politoad is the switch in now. As Seismitoad goes for the Earth Power, he gets to the Death Drop and now he's eject button straight out into Kingdra. And now somebody's taking the Draco to the Dome. And that person is going to be Hippo. Goodbye. But now Dougie comes out, has a chance to knock out this Kingdra. Yep, here we go. Earthquake is not able to knock it out as Kingdra goes for another Draco, bringing it down close to Sash range. And Dugtray goes for another Earthquake, and goodbye Kingdra. So now we go into Sharpedo here, no matter goes into Sharpedo. Dugtray goes for the reversal. Oh, what the flying fuck happened there? What the flying fuck actually happened there? Why didn't he protect? Why didn't he protect? I don't get it. What What the fuck? Okay. That was wacky. I don't know why he didn't protect. He didn't have a Mega. It had to be Sharpedo. He had lost nothing from protecting. Like, I guess he was afraid of getting burned by the Sharpedo. By like the thing, because Seismic could probably live a crunch. But at that point, that's your best bet. If you were afraid of that, then you could have at least gone into Politoed and then made him force him to switch out again. Maybe get some cheap damage on the size of Toad. I don't know. But anyways, we'll move on to the next battle. The next battle here is Tyke versus Dominacio. And Tyke's brought Fairy versus Dark. So we'll see how this goes. Dominacio leads off with Sableye. As Tyke leads off with Magirna and Muck is the switch in. Quick hand is 63% because that looks specs as fuck. Muck goes for the knockoff, knocking off the Klefki's Light Clay, so this Klefki's going to be slightly less cancerous than before. Klefki goes for the Spike. Tyke switches out into Tapu Bulu, as Tyranitar goes for the Stealth Rocks here. Manaba should be a solid switch in, as Wood Hammer is only able to do 31. Yeah, Manaba is a nice solid switch in for Bulu. Um, but I don't know what Dominash is going to do now. Probably gonna switch out, probably double. Yep, go for the U turn. Good play, good play. As he switches out into his Greninja. 
probably protein HP fire is coming in, coming should expect it as you go straight into Klefki here you, better, you just go straight for the hydro pump and it nearly knocks him out wow I'm actually gonna switch out into muck as Klefki goes for another spike you go predict on Tyke's part Kelly goes for a third spike and Muck goes for the knockoff, finally being able to knock out that Klefki. And now Coco is out, the beast Coco is here. Coco goes for the Volt Switch, gets a crit. Ooh, I do not know if that actually mattered. So that's unfortunate for Dominacho. So now Greninja comes back out. As Tyke is going to switch out into his Tapu Bulu to take the hit. Greninja is going to go for the Hydro Pump, do 32% to the Bulu. He's gonna get a little bit with grassy terrain back, and this blue is probably scarf. Yep, it's scarf, and it's able to knock off the Greninja. Take some recoil with the wood hammer damage, and now Sableye comes out here. Sableye goes straight for the Willow Prankster Willow as Bulu goes for the hammer, and boom, recoil comes strikes again. But Sableye's gonna go for recovery here. Will the last of this um tapu Bulu away, and down goes the Bulu. Sableye is at 32% thanks to Grass and Terrain, and now Magirna comes out and claims another soul. Sableye is just going to go straight for the Willow here. As Magirna goes for the Flash Hand, it's able to knock out the Sableye and get a nice Soul Heart boost. Hydreigon comes out, and if this is Specs, it's the only way he can knock him out. So Azu is going to come out here as Hydreigon goes straight for the Fire Blast. And Hydreigon goes for the Z move. The Z move Corkscrew Crash, and it's not able to knock out the Azu, and at that point, that should be GG. Because Tyke has the type advantage, and these two are not enough to hold back Magirna and Coco. So, that's a good game. Tyke is going to take it probably 3 0 here. Maybe 3 0. Yep, he's just going to kill off the, the um, Mandibuzz with a Flash Cannon, and yep, Dominash is going to forfeit because he's lost. Now we move on to the best of three matchup for the Glooms versus the Porygons for this week. And that will be a cast versus clearly. So a cast is rocking, you know, the old classic, the old classic ULC spam, like Alolan Golem team. And now we got clearly here with Bird Jesus. Like, I think Mega Medicham is gone by now, so I don't think we need these mods anymore. This is probably just a new team. Clearly leads off with Chansey as a cast leads off with Coco. Coco's gonna go for the Volt Switch into Golem as Ch Chansey juggles straight for the Seismic Toss. And now Diggers Beast is switching. Now the cast has to pick his sack, and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be Golem. He's gonna choose Rotom here. He's gonna choose Rotom as his destroyed mod of choice. And he's gonna go back into Golem here, see if he can take the frustration. And unfortunately, he definitely cannot fucking take that shit. And down goes the Diggers B. I mean, down goes the Golem. Now we go into Magnazone here. As clearly he's gonna switch out into his Chansey. Full switch should be coming out. No, a cast goes for the flash cannon. Cast gonna switch out chat into Rotom, and this is why you need Thunderous to even do something to normal. Rotom goes for the pain split here on the Chansey as Chansey gets up his rocks, and at this point it should be over now. Miss Wisp, like like Electric is forced to defog the rocks away, and Diggersby should probably prove too much. But anyways, Rotom goes for the Willow here on this Porygon. Willow's down a bit. Goes for the Volt out onto the into Magnezone. As Porygon goes for the Toxic, predicting. I guess that was a prediction. Porygon goes for the recovery here as Magazone goes for a Volt Switch of his own, does 38%. And now Akash goes back into Coco here. Clearly just gonna stay in with his Porygon, go for the recover, try to stall out the electric terrain a little bit, go play on his part. Coco's gonna go for the Volt Switch, and with the Golem gone, like literally, how are you gonna dent this thing? How? How? Even Focus Blast will probably do like 60. Chansey is the switch in here, and now we've got a hard wall to Chansey. Raichu goes for the T-Bolt. It's Life Orb. Life Orb T-Bolt. Raichu goes for the Psy Shock. That's 32. does a little bit more, but at this point, it's just terrible. Psy Shock crit here, or high roll. Nope, it does not happen, and the Chansey gets the soft build up, and I think that's game. I think that's honestly game. The cast goes into Zapdos here. Yeah, I... Diggersby is going to just nuke something on the back on the switch. Frustration, so he does more than half to this Magnazone. And goodbye, this Diggersby should finish off the rest of this game. Rotom comes out here. He's going to switch out into his Chansey. Rotom goes for the Willow. He's fine with that. Clearly, he's definitely fine with that. 
Rotom goes for the Pain Split just to try to get some health back. Chansey goes for the S Toss. He's gonna stall out this Rotom. Are they gonna stall out Chansey versus Rotom? Clear's gonna switch out finally into Porygon 2 to break the monotony. And a cast is gonna go for the Pain Split. A cast goes for the Hydro Pump onto the Porygon as Porygon goes for the Recover. Yeah, this is gonna be nice, fast, fast right here. Oh, pardon that. We're gonna go for the toxic on the road and finally poisoning it. And I think at this point, like, yep. Yep. I literally can't break this core without Golem. You can barely break it with Golem. Because all you have to do is like switch into Diggersby. Like, because all you gotta do is switch into Diggersby on normal, even with a Golem. Because literally, you don't have to predict Stone Edge or when he's immune to the electric most stab. He's immune to the freaking. He's immune to. Or he's. He's resist the stone stab, and then Earthquake doesn't do much because it's no longer stab. But anyways, we'll move on to the next battle. The next battle is a cast versus clear. Oh, of course it is. I'm just tired. It's fucking like 3 o'clock in the morning right now. Anyway, cast has the anti-mega meta champ team and clearly has bug. Clearly leads off with Heracross. A cast leads off with Driller. Cast is going to switch out into Magirna here as Heracross goes straight for the CC. That's a dick mode. Ooh, Akash is going to switch out his Magirna into the double eight as Heracross goes for a second CC. Clary's going to switch out into Galvantula here as double eight goes straight for the Shadow Claw. Gets a crit and brings it down to a Sash. So now Sh Sneak should knock out the Galvantula, which is unfortunate for Clearly here. Volcarona comes out and is it sleeping time? The Seatron has a Balloon though and this Volcarona has Bug Bus. So if it's a Bug Bus HP ground fire move, he's, lo he's lost. Heatran goes for the taunt here on the Armaldo, so no HP ground clearly. Armaldo goes for the Stone Edge and does about 41%, and now I cast has to switch out into the blade, but clearly predicts that and knocks off the double blade. Armaldo double or bleh, knocks off again as double blade goes for the SD, knock off a third time. Shadow Claw is going to do 52% to the Armaldo, so it's not going to be enough. He goes for the sneak to get off some extra damage, and Armaldo goes for the knockoff, finally knocking out that double blade. So now Heracross is free to run Terra, I guess, on his team. Actually, just gonna go for the EQ here, knock that thing out, and now we go into Scizor, Mega Formation. A cast gonna switch out into his Magirna here as the Scizor goes straight for the Defog. Scizor goes for the Bullet Punch as he gets a crit, able to knock out the Magirna, and now into Heatran we go. Heatran gets the rocks back up, and this Scizor has superpower. It's superpower Bullet Punch Defog. Damn, what a set. So now Celestial is going to come out, Caesar is going to get off another defog, and his only chance here is to autonomize, and this actually might be a fucking threat. Celestial goes for the Fire Blast, boom, able to knock out the Scizor. Volcarona switches in, Celestial is going to use the Z move, boom, Supersonic Sky Strike comes out, goodbye Volcarona. Heracross, even if it's faster, should not be able to kill this thing. And all Clearly can hope for at this point is a praying for an Air Slash miss of sorts. Boom. So good win on the cast's part. So I guess I guess he, if he had that autonomized Celestial in the back, then the cast played it well to win that game. Whew. God, I'm sleepy. Now we'll move on to game three of this MPL match. I'm doing this because like I haven't like posted like any MPL content on my channel for quite a while and I felt like I needed to do it immediately. So Anyways, we have a cast versus clearly game three, and a cast brought Mega Meta Cham, which apparently is still here week four, and clearly brought like a bulky Ebola water. Cast leads off with Deoxys here. Deoxys goes for the Tauntinators. Polion goes for the knockoff, doesn't even do half, unfortunately. Cast goes for the rocks. Polion goes for a Scald. Clearly, he's gonna switch out into Alomomola. Deoxys gets off the light screen. Deoxys goes for the taunt here. His Alamola goes for the scald. The burn is not even able to knock out this Deoxys, which is kind of pathetic. Alamola just ass. And now Cast at least gets his screens up before he goes, but they're short screens because without the light clay. Clearly he's going to switch out into his Empoleon. As Mew's going to go for the nasty plot, trying to break Clearly's core in half. Focus Blast is un really unable to hit, unfortunately, and Napoleon gets the roar off into the Alakazam. Alakazam goes for a Focus Blast of Zone, does half to the Empoleon. And Curry's now going to switch out into Mantine here, the wall. 
Alex Alexander goes for focus blast. If a cast is life orb with like Psy Shock, this is a big problem to clear his team. But he's not, so he goes straight into Lottie on the Toxic. Good prediction on Clearly's part to switch out into something. And now we go back out into Napoleon here as Latios goes for the Psy Shock. And he's taking Life Orb and Toxic damage too. He's gonna do another Psy Shock to knock out the Empoleon finally, but not before he's down to 32%. And now Toxic Effects is the move here. Latios goes for the Roost as Toxic Effects goes for a T Spike. And now he can go freely into Alakazam here. Now he's gonna go straight for the Psy Shock onto the Toxic Effects. And Toxic goes for a second T-Spike, but clearly can switch out now to conserve his Toxic if he wants to. Azu's the switch in here, as Gladios goes for the Ruse, but the poison is eating away at him slowly. He goes for the Psy Shock here on the Azu, which is bulky, it's like the Scald, like maybe knock off Whirlpool, Parish Song, something, something like that, and a cast Gladios goes down. Now cast brings out Mega Metacham, the essential wall breaker, and Metacham goes straight or high jump kick? No, he goes for Zen Headbutt, as clearly goes for Protect, trying to predict a high jump kick of sorts. Clearly he's going to switch out into his Tox Effects here, as Medicham goes for Zen Headbutt, and down goes the Tox Effects. Alamomola is the switch at this point, and Akash is going to switch back into Alakazammer now, as Alamomola goes straight for the Wish. Alakazam uses Psychic, gets his Pedef drop on this Aloe, and... Aloe Al gets the mirror coat off and hangs on with his focus sash. Alakazam goes for the psychic here and it still does not kill as Aloe goes for a skull to knock the Alakazam out. Now Mew is the switch in and it's toxic and taken spikes damage or rocks damage. Clearly goes for the protect as Mew goes for the nasty plot. His only shot to win is by using this mon of death right here. And now Mantine is a little switch in on Clearly's part and psychic does 49% able to knock out that Mantine. Now we go to Alamomola for more protect shenanigans, I'm sure of it. Yeah, the Alamomola goes for the protect, and Mew goes for the Z move, Genesis Supernova. And he's able to chip this thing away off with some damage on protect. So now Akath gets one more kill with Mew at least. And that kill is going to be Azumarill, so goodbye. And hello to you. Alamomola is going to come back in, probably protect, but it's not going to matter. Unless Akath, of course, switches into Victini. And the Alo goes for the protect here. Victini like takes poison damage, goes for the U-turn, back out into Mega Meta Chain we go, as Alamola goes for the Wish at this point. Alamola goes for the Protect as Meta Chain goes for the Zen Headbutt and gets his Wish health back. Now let's see how much Mega Meta Chain's high jumping is going to do. It's going to do 75, which is not enough as the Alamola can wish this back off and Toxic stall the Meta Chain. And he realized that he's going to switch into Victini here, and Alamola is going to go for the Protect because it can't afford to lose this thing. This thing wins for it. Almo is going to protect again, trying to scout the bolt strike. Good play, good play. That's all you need to do. And the T spikes and the rocks are going to will a cast team, it seems like, for the most part. Because that bolt strike even did nothing. It did 45%. Clearly goes for the protect here as Victini goes for another bolt strike. And down goes with Victini to the toxic. And at this point, I think it's over and clearly has won it. This Mew is not going to last long. That Mega Meta Champ is not going to last long. Yep. The cast is still fighting though. He goes for the psychic on the Alamola. And down goes the mute toxic. And finally, Mega Metacham comes out and a last ditch HAK crit bullshit is not gonna happen. And clearly he's able to take this game after one more turn, obviously. Yeah, clearly takes this game solid 2-0 in his favor. So he wins the best of three bout there. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And I even though I'm like half asleep and tune in into the next video for more MPL coverage. Peace.